Ladies and gentlemen, we are playtesting both Chrono Warden and Flame Shaper Hero Talents for Preservation Evoker on the War Within Beta. We're gonna compare them and talk about whether or not they're gonna be good fits for Mythic Plus and Raiding. We're starting with the Chrono Warden and to be honest I wasn't sure what to expect from this one but I was very very pleasantly surprised. Your Living Flames are accumulating 50% of the damage and healing you've done to that target in the last 5 seconds which makes them even more powerful. And your Capstone Talent is one of the tier set bonuses that we've seen so far already. Every time you cast Empowered Spell you send out 3 extra Chrono Flames to your targets which will do extra damage and healing. Those are also the empowered version of the Living Flame and they are very very powerful exactly as you would expect them to be. Just because of them, in the damage meters at the end of the run Living Flame was basically top for my damage and healing pulled as I was sending those empowered versions every time I pressed empowered spell. Of course that's not everything that you get, there is actually so much more. For example every time you press tip the scales you get a buff that reduces the cooldown recovery rate of your spells, it gives you haste and speed and there is another talent which gives you cooldown reduction for the empower spell that you just casted up to 6 seconds. Now the exact number of that seems to be random but nevertheless you get the cooldown reduction every time you use one of those spells which is simply great as it synergizes very well with your capstone talent. Even more so when you get the tip the scales buff you are actually empowering a nearby ally to gain a buff that gives them a chance to replicate some of the damage and healing that they are already doing. Now this smells like augmentation evoker a lot and we don't know what the chance to proc this is going to be. But it's a welcome buff that you give out passively and if you are in a coordinated group and you align this with your big cooldowns you can actually get a lot of value out of this specifically I guess in mythic plus environment. Back to healing, another effect that we've seen already, spirit bloom leaves a hot on your targets and this time you're getting a haste buff for the duration of this hot which makes this spell actually very powerful because remember you can get a cooldown reduction for up to 6 seconds when you cast it and every time you cast it you're sending out those extra living flames. All of that complements the playstyle of the preservation evoker in a very nice way and I became a huge fan of this hero talent spec quite quickly. There are some little bit less useful talents, for example your dream and firebreads can actually extend their duration based on your critical strikes. That's not groundbreaking but it's quite welcome and if you cast echo there's a small chance that your next echo is going to be much more effective. Those are talents that we definitely don't mind and can definitely stay there and there's one more interesting twist. Your hover is replaced with something that's supposed to be a blink but I've played mage and the mage's blink is actually instant. This one doesn't have a cast time but it has some kind of a weird animation that happens before you actually blink which feels a little bit weird. But I guess if we play a little bit with it we're gonna get used to it and it's not gonna feel that awkward. The talents that come along with it are also kind of useless, for example if you blink you leave modes behind and if your allies walk on top of them they get a small speed buff which lasts 30 seconds but it's not that big. So it's not all perfect but overall as I said before this hero talent spec feels really really nice. It's preservation evoker doing a lot of damage, a lot of healing but it's even better than before. Next up we have Flame Shaper and I had very high expectations about this one. It adds new skill to your toolkit, it's called Engulf. It's a 30 second instant cast cooldown which you can use to do either big single target damage or healing. The healing part is definitely interesting because it is increased for each periodic healing effect that you have on the target. In that case if you have both dream breath and reversion on the target it's going to heal for a hundred percent more which is a lot. The other cool thing that you can do with engulf is it works with echo. So that opens even more possibilities for you when it comes to healing. But at the end of the day I kinda had mixed feelings about this one. First when do you use it for healing, when do you use it for damage. And then if you do decide to use it for healing there is some setup that you need to do there are quite a few interactions that you need to be aware of so all this kind of made the class even more complicated than it already is. 
which is not what hero talents are supposedly made for. Now, don't get me wrong, Engulf is amazing, it does a lot of damage, it does a lot of healing, you can store it into your stasis, you can combine it with your temporal anomaly, and simply put, it pumps even without the other talents that I'm going to show you next. A little bit of practice is going to go a long way for the order of the buttons that you need to be pressing, and the combos that you could be using. And number wise, comparing the two hero talent specs at the end of the dungeon, they seem to be doing the same amount both for healing and damage, but you have to do a lot of extra work with the engulf and it kinda comes much more easier with the Crown Warden. Regardless of that, keep in mind that you will be working with two charges of engulf as you get a free talent that gives you an extra charge. The spell has huge interaction with your breath spells as it extends their duration on your target by 8 seconds as long as of course they're active on it. And the capstone talent in the middle there consumes 4 seconds of your dream breath on the target to do AoE healing around them. All of that of course is pretty cool, especially if you use it for healing and you get a talent that flat increases the damage of your fire breath and the healing of your dream breath. You're also getting something called Enkinda which buffs your essence burst spells. This one is a bit weird because you either need to be casting emerald blossoms to get the healing effect or single target disintegrates to get the damage component out of it. Which is very niche and situational and of course using this on echo is not going to give you much benefit. So although this sounds good on paper, at the end of the day it didn't do that much at the end of the dungeon, neither for healing nor for damage. Check this one though, Renewing Blaze can also apply to your target or nearby ally. This is actually very powerful because we all know how good Renewing Blaze is, especially in certain situations. You can basically neglect the damage of a mechanic using that and now you can apply it to somebody else as well and that somebody else could as well be your tank. So I really hope they don't change this one because it's simply amazing. Some of the other talents give you increased critical strike chance against targets below 50% health and the critical strikes themselves from Living Flame and Azure Strike have a bigger chance to give you Essence Burst. These talents of course are quite not disruptive to your gameplay and are quite welcome and you also get to hover a little bit further, which is another weird one kinda like the blink and maybe I'm biased because the roll of the monk is quite low range just enough to get you out of a mechanic or out of the way of a frontal and I definitely don't want to end up at the other end of the map once I press hover but this one I guess is also going to take a little bit of getting used to. Alright and of course the question comes which one is better and which one you should play. First when it comes to numbers I think they're both competitive and the difference between the two is not going to be that big at least at this point and with this tuning in the beta. When it comes to rating I haven't had a chance to test there yet but I can see benefits for both specs being viable there. So I don't think we can declare a winner neither for mythic plus nor for rating at this point. However, I must say that my personal preference so far is the Chrono Warden as it feels much smoother to play. I was kind of vibing playing with it while the engulf did feel a little bit like a struggle, but I can't say it's worse, in fact quite the opposite. And probably with just a little bit of practice this pack is also going to start to flow and it would feel just as good if not better than the Chrono Warden. Only time will tell so stay tuned to this channel for more War Within beta updates as well as more content for the rest of the healer hero talent specs. I'll see you in the next video, thanks for watching, now get out of here.